You guys, do you see the ripples in the water straight ahead? Right there? That's all bait fish. What's going on everyone? It's Kelly here and right now we are in Stewart, Florida. We got Blue Gabe at the wheel, Hello. catching bait. We got Adam. Howdy, howdy. And his girlfriend. Good to meet you. Kim. Right now we're catching bait. We wanted sardines. However, it looks like we're gonna get some greenies because that tends to all be in front of us right now. There's big, big, big schools of greenies. So we're gonna take what we can get. We're gonna run offshore. We're gonna use the hooker electric, try to catch a tile fish. Um, if not, we're gonna rig up some snapper rods and go snapper fishing, guys. We're just going fishing. The weather here in Florida has been terrible this past like two months. It's been blowing nonstop. It's been overcast. So we're just gonna see what we can do today, but I'll see y'all out on the water. If you guys don't know what a greenie is, this is what we call a greenie over here on the East Coast. Check them out. Now, I think they are really good bait. However, Blue Gabe thinks that sardines are a lot better and a lot of other fishermen do too, but I like using greenies. So since the bait is so thick here, Gabe said, you know what? We're not sabiking anymore. I'm tired of one at a time in it. <laughs> if you've ever sabiki rigged, you get hooked so much, especially with these greenies. So if I catch them, I'm probably gonna catch way more than we need. We'll take the rest home and freeze them and put them up for when we can't get bait. There we go. Look at all the bait. That's insane. All right there. How deep is it right here? 24 feet. 20? Pretty deep and there's a lot of current. You're gonna have to get to the south end of it. All right. It's 24 feet deep here at the bait spot. Turn right. Ooh, yeah. reverse. Hard reverse. Hard. <laughs> Watch you not get any in the net. It's super deep. So these baits can swim out the bottom of the net. Yeah. It's 24 feet. Oh wait, I think I I think I see Reverse a lot. A oh my gosh, look at all that. Oh, are you gonna be able to pull this in? I don't know if I got in here or not. Wait, are those not all the baits right there? Oh, I thought I saw a bunch of them in the net. You've got some. There's a massive school of bait right next to the net. That's what I was looking at. Dang. Blue runners. No. Bring that bucket up here. Yep. We're gonna go amberjack, catch some amberjacks on them runners. I haven't had a good back break in a while. Amberjack. Here you go. Let's go. Throw a number two. So there's a bunch of this like red slime, red seaweed down there on the bottom. Right it's away. all over the cast net. So Gabe was saying that the fish can now really see the net coming now. Let's go. Pancakes for days. <laughs> Y'all right look. Now they're all under the net, but they just. They swim out from under it. Reverse. Reverse. That's good. Holy mackerel. Or just a hair. We got some color. See guys, you just can't give up. There we go. There we go. Ooh, don't fall in. <laughs> Sometimes you just need to go bow first, right in the middle of the bait pod, and just throw the net. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh my oh, god. No. Oh. There you go. Drop them on the deck. About two dozen, put them in there, not Oh god. Oh no. Alright, that's good. Save a couple. <laughs> Put them in the well. 
Put the rest of those in the bucket. That is hilarious. Sweet. Well, guys, looks like we got bait. <laughs> We just made it to our deep dropping spot. We stopped a few times. We tried to troll in the weeds. No luck. We tried to deep drop on this 300 foot spot that we found on Seymour Maps. It looks incredible. Unfortunately, there's no fish on it yet. We haven't found them yet, but right now we're at the tile fish spot. Gabe is going to go ahead and set down the hooker electric. We got three whole squid on. We're sending her down. About 800, 900 feet. The hardest part is the beginning. You've got to let that weight get going. There you go, now it's dropping. There we go. A lot of weed today, which will mess us up because it'll add extra drag to the line. What's the, and the current's ripping too. Yeah, there's seven miles of, seven miles an hour of current. <laughs> That's like when we were diving the other day, right? So this spot, Blue Gabe, myself, and the kids came out uh, probably like four, four weeks ago. And very first time using the hooker electric rail, Gabe hooks up to two golden tiles. So we're gonna hope for that again today. We'll see. But we are officially fishing. So with deep dropping, it's just a waiting game. Right now we have the bow of the boat into the current and we're keeping the line about six, seven feet off the side of the boat here, as you can see. Most important thing is you don't want that line to come into your motor. So it's, it's like a two man job. You gotta have one person on the reel, everyone's watching the rod tip and another one drive the boat. Oh, sorry. Dave, are you working hard? I'm working really hard here. Just level winding the school. It looks like we might have a fish on. Sorry, it's a little loud, guys. That's the electric rail for you. So do I just slow it down when I see the black line? It's like crackling the line. <laughs> this is my first time ever actually touching this thing. Guess what? What? That's where I caught my first one. We just had this bite right where I caught my first one. The magic spot. A few moments later. Babe, babe, babe. What? Just joking. God, uh... <laughs> <laughs> what happened? I'm literally gonna die of stress because of you. Like, I'm, I, I swear. I literally am. Floor it, babe. Give her a gallon. Slow down, slow down, slow down. Just in time. <laughs> I've seen this engine. I stopped it literally just in time. Sorry, babe. But look what we got out there. We got a floater. We got a floater. <laughs> Here's the gap. Oh. That came in a lot faster than I thought. We should put that little black mark like a little bit with a further notice. Look at him! What's the size limit on these guys? Do you know? He's a keeper. He is? Look at his eyeballs! How cool is that? This is a golden tile fish on the electric hooker and the Stan Spam fishing rod. Yeah, I forgot to give Stan Spam a shout out. Stan Spam! Shout out Nick Stanzik! <laughs> Alright, let's get this bad boy off. Dang, look, they got teeth like crazy. Oh, this is a big old hook. Almost there we go. Check this bad boy out. Look at his little thingy up here, his little, his little mohawk. Well, it's almost as big as yours, babe. Well, let's catch another. Let's do it. The exact same spot you caught yours. Literally. Literally, that is insane. There must be just like a little pile of them right here. Well, safe to say this one's going in the cooler. We got 
my dinner. Kim, you're up to bat, girl. <laughs> Get your workout you in for the day. Out? It's a big fish. I think I got it now. Are we near the wreck? No, we're off of it. All we're right. good. All right, we're good. The fish looks like it can't go in into any structure. So that's it's good nice for us. Pump. It's real steady. <gasps> Come on. Did it do it again? No. Yeah. No way. Sharks. Yeah. Dang. We must be getting sharked because it keeps cutting the line right at the hook. Yeah, we are hooked on fish number three. The first two we believe were sharks. We got the line cut. Let's hope this That's one's right. a keeper, baby. This one's got a this one's got a nice little head shake on it. Yeah, boy. Does it feel the same as the other fish? That's the first one, yeah. So we're in between a wreck and a rubble pile, thanks to Seymour Maps. And we've just been drifting in between the two. The current is ripping, the wind is blowing, and it's white capping. It's a rough day out here. Ah, <gasps> uh, it's got a good rod, Sam. My, I, I feel like, I feel like it's an amberjack. Oh, running back down. Back. You look good, girl. I like your stance. <laughs> Looking nice. Racing on something. Uh, something might have ate the fish. Uh, thing is going. Maybe a Jew fish ate it. AKA Goliath Jew grouper. Better. You just realized he was coming up. Fighting a half hour. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes that does happen. Sometimes, Sometimes a fish doesn't even realize it's hooked. And they'll just be like, all right, this is easy. And then they'll be like, oh crap, what is this? Whew. Then they'll start really fighting. There you go. She's still gaining on it, though. Someone's gonna be sore tonight. <laughs> go easy on her tonight. Time you were looking for it, she's gone. <laughs> <laughs> 184 feet down. That was the wreck. Come on, baby. Gotta keep. Gotta keep turning the hand. Yeah, we're coming up to Perfect. another wreck. Come on, babe, let's go. You're doing good. I didn't know you could fight fish. <laughs> I'm used to the uh, spinning rounds, though. They can oh. just a little. I feel you. I love spinning rails a lot more than conventional. That rod, then, <laughs> though. You're doing great. Do you take your fishing? Apparently he's been watching Blue Gate because she knows how to stand. <laughs> she has the proper fishing stance. Yes. Proper. Wait on the pillar. I'm just curious how this wind's going to be in this mic. We got a little fuzzy patch on the GoPro with a nice polarized lens. It's our new little getup on the GoPros that we got. Oh, no! no. Jesus. Disappointment oh. strikes again. <laughs> Well, right line's now. cut again. Oh, no more luck. Look at that stance. Get him out of that wreck, babe. <laughs> the hard part's over. Oh, man. <laughs> the hard part's over. You got it. You guys, this is our fifth, fifth attempt, and we keep getting picked up right, uh, right in front of the wreck. Oh, that's a fighter. Oh, come on. Oh, no, come on. Dude, we gotta figure out what fish this is. There we go. Dang. It's got a mean head shake. On the gunnel, not on the bow. Whoa. It's doing the same exact thing. We need to get this fish in. Oh God, it's running like crazy. I'm trying to think. Amberjack, it's gotta be an amberjack. That fish hit hard. It looked like it hit hard. Dude, you put the boots to him at the beginning. Sure. I'm trying to keep him out of it. 
I'd pull up and try to get it under. All right. As soon as Gabe hooked into that fish, that fish was running straight for the wreck. That's the one thing about wreck fishing is if you don't get that fish up and out of the wreck, you're toast. That fish is gonna go in the wreck and it's gonna cut your line. Sweating over here driving the boat. Uh, hard, man. This is hard work. <laughs> A lot of lefts and rights. Very curious to see how this mic's doing. Oh yeah. Dun, 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 dun. Let's probably get this gaff ready, huh? Yeah, you got it? Gabe's got the baby gap. No, 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 keep the head turned, keep the head turned. Mahi, there you go. Ahi, ahi, ahi. Ahi. Yeah. You're really stupid if I'm putting a mahi this hard. That'd be a big old mahi. <laughs> this rod has a nice backbone to it. It does. It looks... See this Mags custom rod? How the rod bends? That's why you buy Mags rods. It doesn't kill your back. Nope. She might have a sore. Growing area. <laughs> <in the world. laughs> hey, it's here. <laughs> That's it. Oh no, a shark's about to eat. No, no, no stop. No. Real, 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 Don't real, say real. that. I was just joking. <laughs> <laughs> this fish, I don't know. I can't see color yet, but it's probably maybe. Mm, gosh, I don't, I don't even see know. I see it on the bottom machine, so we don't know. I'm All thinking it's is, like 50, 60 foot. Yeah, she's inside of 100. So on the main, on the rod is 40 pound Beyond Brave with a 100 pound fluorocarbon leader. So oh. she's got the right gear. Oh yeah. She's got the back muscle to support it all. Just oh, the left yes. wrist. <laughs> the left wrist, no. <laughs> Gotta do yeah. some, some risk exercises. Right. I don't <laughs> let just anybody use that rod either. That's my nicest rod. Come on. We got oh, baby, he's only 10 pounds. If a shark would bite his tail off, that would be perfect. <laughs> yeah. He's close. You got him like your tuna, feet. Like your tuna in Venice, Louisiana. Yeah. A shark bit the tail off and he just reeled it right up. It was perfect. It bled out the fish and we we're able to get the fish in the boat. Oh, that'd be, oh, we see color. It's something big. There, Adam, you're going to have to handline it when it gets up here. All right. You don't lose grip of that rod when he's handlining. It's a big jump or whatever it is. Woo, look at that. Is that a mullet? <laughs> oh. Look at the size of that. Oh. Right here, right here. It's, don't, oh don't my really goodness. Anymore. Don't really anymore. Don't really anymore. All right. All right, here comes nothing. And yeah, buddy. Woo. Oh, what a fish. <laughs> Whoa, good job. Woo. He's, what He's a fish. 35 pounds. Come here, Kim. Jesus. <laughs> you earned that one. <laughs> there you go, girl. You earned him with that offset 7766 Mustad. Oh, yeah. Kelly had never seen me do that before. I bent the hook just a little bit from straight. It's actually back straight now. Yeah. <laughs> when you do that, it can't get out of the fish's mouth without hooking him. Nice. Oh, look at that little parasite. Oh, Lord. Look at it. <laughs> You want to turn him loose now? Look at the parasites all over. There's parasites all over him. Oh, yeah. Let's pack him. We're smoking that joker. For real? You want to smoke it? Well, you got to stuck a gaff What do you want to do? Well, we can't turn him loose. We stuck a gaff in him. He's going let's on. Smoke him. The grill. All the right. <laughs> Kim wants some fish. Look at the shark. Oh, trigger. look. Shark. Big shark. That's a big old silky or a dusky. So we are going to bleed out this fish right now. We're putting the cast net rope through his gills just so we don't lose the fish when we put them overboard in the water. We gotta be careful that shark don't come back. So all you do is take the knife, make a little slit right under their gills, pop that vein, they'll bleed right out. You guys, while we're bleeding this fish out, we got two sharks up at the boat. We're gonna go ahead and stick a GoPro in the water.
or something with him? Good. Good. It looks like it. It looks like a kind of pink. Silky sharks are my absolutely favorite shark to dive with. They're so cool. And right now, June, July, is when they're migrating across the coast of Florida. And as soon as Gabe said that there's sharks eating at about 180 foot, I'm like, it's either a silky or a sandbar. Sure enough, it was silky sharks. All right, y'all, we're putting the fish in the cooler, but first we gotta take a thumbnail, which is the picture you see before you flick the video. So myself and Kim, we're gonna hold up our fish and get that thumbnail. much bigger one this is a target rich location you guys that was a rough ride in we just hauled but right now we're relaxing a little bit we're jumping in the water gabe of course is snook fishing he just caught probably about a 20 two incher pounder. two pounder yeah he just caught a little snook um but right now we're just chilling and we're gonna go back to the house we're gonna fillet that tile fish yeah. and i'm gonna Duck cook it up sand. tomorrow I saw us catch the golden tile you saw me clean the golden tile in super fast motion now this is cooking the golden tile now I went ahead and cut the pin bones out as you can see here and a little bit of the bloodline as you can tell the golden tile fish really doesn't have a massive bloodline which is really good for us because that means more meat now this fish was 800 feet chilling on the bottom in the mud no structure in the mud like a mud guppy because that's what they are they're massive mud guppies and we pulled him right up and now he's at the dinner table so we are going to make the golden tile with a little bit of like an asian dish that i discovered on google that i never made before so we're going to see how it tastes today okay so first things first is we have shiitake mushrooms this is what they look like here they look like a mushroom i went ahead and just cut off like the little end of the mushroom there just because I wanted to. And I went ahead and cut them into fourths. Just like so. Bada bang, bada boom. And I also have portobello mushrooms as well, just because I had extra from breakfast, so I'm gonna add them into the mixture too. I have a pan over here with probably a splash of water and a splash of olive oil. So we're gonna add our mushrooms. A little bit of these as well. Uh, there we go. And we're just gonna saute these mushrooms for about three minutes or so. Make sure they don't stick to the pan. And then we're gonna add our bok choy. Now, for those of you that don't know what bok choy is, I'll put a picture right here. It kind of like a, looks like a big old thing of lettuce, but if I was to explain the flavor of bok choy, it would be watery, crispy, crunchy, and refreshing. And I actually had bok choy for the very first time in a vegan restaurant called Christopher's Kitchen down in West Palm, and when I ate it, I fell in love with it. I usually eat it raw, cold, but I'm going to saute it this time in the mushrooms. So the sauce that we're going to make for our bok choy and our mushrooms is going to be just kind of like a garlic sauce. We have some organic soy sauce here that I just got at Publix. We have some organic rice vinegar. And you can use minced garlic or I just chopped up some fresh garlic. We're going to put that in our soy sauce and rice vinegar along with some ginger as well. Now you can use a grater for the ginger, like a cheese grater. I didn't have one, so I just chopped it up really fine. And just give that a stir, and that's gonna be our sauce. Next up, you're gonna add your bok choy. Come in and get a little close. Let me tell you, this dish right here is probably one of the most healthiest dishes you could make. 
Mushrooms are Earth's medicine, and if you look up health benefits of mushrooms, different kinds of mushrooms, it'll surprise you. It's pretty insane, actually. All right, so we're gonna saute in the bok choy for probably about four or five minutes, pretty much until it's sauteed. Just kind of depends on how your heat is. I have the heat at about medium. A couple minutes, I might turn it down to like medium low and then add my sauce. So I have the sauce here that I showed you earlier. I went ahead and diluted like a half a teaspoon of cornstarch in some water. You gotta do this first because if you put the cornstarch straight into the sauce that you want to thicken, it'll get clumpy. I don't know why, but it does. And I did it once a long time ago and I like put it, I was just like rushing around and I got clumps of cornstarch in my food. So that wasn't cool. So now this sauce should thicken up a little bit when it gets heated up. All right, while that is sauteing, we're gonna go ahead and add our seasoning to our fish. We got a little bit of garlic salt here. Garlic salt is pretty much good on everything. You can use it on red meat, chicken, fish, vegetables, potatoes, everything. It's a great all around seasoning. I'm actually super excited to try this. I know it's kind of hard to see because I'm dumping it where the camera angle is. And you're going to let that simmer for about two to three minutes. Pretty much two to three minute intervals like in between each ingredient. The mushrooms, the bok choy, the sauce and garlic. And that smells good. That smells like a peanut sauce. Alright, we're going to let that simmer. Then we're going to add our fish. Okay, so I just have some butter in this pan here. I turned it down because I didn't want the butter to burn earlier. There we go. I'm tile fish is oh my gosh. It's one of the best fish you can eat. I'm just gonna add that for now. Whew, I'm excited. I have my grandpa out on the back patio right, right now. We have Rob, which is my mom's boyfriend. My mom is behind the camera helping me film. Hello. And we got my grandma who's walking around with an alcohol beverage in her hand. So we're going to go ahead and finish cooking this fish. We're just pan searing it. It's a pretty thin piece of fish because I did butterfly some of the thicker pieces, which I just simply thinned them out and cut them in half. Oh. You get that little golden brown crunch to it with the butter, it's gonna be good. Mm. I also made some rice as well. To kind of go under this little topping here. You guys, this entire week in Florida has been thunderstorms, overcast, and rainy. I mean, this is the windiest summer we've had in a very long time, since from what I can remember. Like, myself and Blue Gabe, my boyfriend, who also has another YouTube channel, like, we're just trying to find a nice, flat, calm day to run over the Bahamas and just have a good day fishing offshore, but we're constantly battling weather and when it gets overcast i don't know about anybody else in the comments below let me know but the overcast affects my mood like when it's overcast i want to just relax stay in the house sleep eat eat <laughs> i just yeah i don't want to do anything and that's how this whole month has been but we're trying to push through it's almost done here the little piece Oh my gosh, look how it's falling apart. Oh man. That's how you know it's good fish right there. Mm. This is good stuff. Now get on the spatula. There we go. That piece has got to cook a little bit more. 
as you can see the sky behind me it is about to pour down rain but we are all set up outside we are eating some good old tile fish some bok choy mushroom some good old rice there's mama dukes there's rob and there's grandpa grandpa how do you like the fish good guess how deep we caught the fish like how many feet of water do you think we caught that fish in i don't know just take a wild guess i already know he what? told me he did i didn't know i just said that's where they live oh <laughs> 800 feet isn't that insane and they live in the mud they don't even live on structure yeah, yeah. that's a mud fish it's a mud guppy a nice clean mud fish guppy. though oh yeah cold super water. clean fish cold deep water mm. have you ever had tile the buck fish? chow is really good buck chow how do you say it buck choy buck all right choy. you guys i'm gonna tell you something about my mom <laughs> every single word she says wrong <laughs> Can you pr can you agree with me? Yes. And bok choy is not that hard to <laughs> pronounce. Bok choy. Bok choy. I bet you got to say bok choy. <laughs> bok choy. It was bok choy. Bok. 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 Oh, it's really good. That's all I care about. I know one thing. The fish I like is to fantastic. eat it. Oh yeah. Is this your first time eating tallow fish, mom? I I may have had it once before when you had it. Mm. But, um, oh, I did bring home some yeah. like last year. It's really good. So Excellent. good. Thank you, thank you. It's not that? fishy at all. No fish I make is fishy. I mean, but you know how some fish are fishier? <laughs> Give a thumbs up there, Harold. No, I need to. Good. My grandma's in there making the dog food because she if we eat the dog has to eat too but right now we're ending this video thanks for tagging along guys thanks for watching make sure to hit that subscribe button and hit the thumbs up if you like the video be sure to check out blue gabe's channel as well he's the reason i caught this tile fish so thank you to actually shout out to hooker electric reels for the electric reel to catch this tile fish as well and i'll see y'all on the next video see ya